Folks, it's Fernando, doing our video for Mars Survivalist, and you probably heard the news if you've been keeping up with what's happening in South America. Um, Cristina Kirchner is going to be leaving the presidency. There's been elections past weekend. Mauricio Macri won those elections, and Mauricio Macri is a new president of Argentina. I, I couldn't be happier. I honestly never thought I'd see the day. Um, it's been 12 years of Kirchner uh, rulership in Argentina. First came uh, Néstor Kirchner, then his wife Cristina Kirchner, and then a second term of Cristina Kirchner. So it's been 12 years of, uh, of an extremely authoritarian, almost a dictatorship, uh, running the country. Extremely corrupt, in-your-face kind of corruption. We do anything we want. We just laugh uh, at you in your face uh, as we commit crimes, as we completely disregard the constitution of the country we just do anything we want that's been the way they've been running things in the country these last 12 years and this has been possible mostly because this goes back to the 2001 economic collapse which is the stuff that they've mostly been writing about these last few years so because of the economic collapse of 2001 the country was was in ruins basically no one even wanted to be president of the country Argentina uh, basically broke down in December 2001 uh, the president resigned uh, we had five you know famously five presidents in one week one uh, assuming presidency resigning the following day when he saw the mess that he was getting into so we went through five different presidents until uh, Duarte uh, took charge of the situation somewhat and got things a uh, you know, at least stops somewhat of the anarchy going on and call for elections and basically we uh, voted against the guy that was mostly responsible for the economic collapse which was Carlos Menem. Carlos Menem, a, a very a neoliberal but mostly a, a corrupt guy again corruption seems to always be the theme in Argentina so a guy that basically sold the country between the corruption that he had uh, himself going on and the the arrangements and all the the shady business going on with the International Monetary Fund with, with different uh, international uh, corporations basically sold the country ruined the, the entire economy the country went down uh, like you know like, like we've never seen before so after that we basically just wanted someone that was not Carlos Menem Dualde basically proposed Néstor Kirchner a uh, very much unheard of governor of Santa Cruz until that point but you know Dualde was, was the guy that got us somewhat out of the mess um, in, in those years so when he proposed Néstor Kirchner, pretty much everyone voted for the, for the guy because he was the alternative to Carlos Menem. Néstor Kirchner turned out to be worse than, than Menem, even more authoritarian, even more violent, uh, and even more corrupt, which is uh, something that you know, says a lot. So, that's and with this, pretty much this revival of the communist le extreme left uh, agenda, which is mostly a, an agenda thing because these same uh, people, the, the Kirchner back in the day, they, they, they weren't uh, in any way a field, they were actually bankers themselves. They were working with banks and um, you know, taking over people's homes if they couldn't pay uh, when. Uh, they were taking uh, uh, people's uh, homes uh, when they lost their mortgages. That was their job. So it wasn't as if they were like these patriotic <laughs> communists, uh, you know, something. So basically they were lawyers working with the banks uh, and uh, selling... Uh, uh, homes so but they got this speech this left-wing bullshit thing going on which they, they use as, as their flag during their t uh, 12 years um, running things in Argentina it's amazing that finally people voted for something else it's very difficult to get rid uh, of a government that's basically a uh, paying people for their vote you know with, with their handouts with their uh, different um, uh, plans and, and and welfare which mostly has been used as a way of, of buying votes I mean you only got those plans you only got their money which is basically uh, the, the people's money so you, you basically got uh, to uh, keep um, uh, you, you basically got that that those handouts if 
you were affiliated with uh, their uh, political movement. So when you have a government that basically buys votes with the, the people's money, it's extremely difficult to get rid of something like that. But Argentina fortunately did, and they voted. There's a little bit of a shady thing going on. In theory, Mauricio Macri won with 52% of the votes. Uh, what's being said behind uh, the, the curtains is that Mauricio Macri actually won for uh, about 60% of the votes. But uh, so as to give the, the leaving uh, government, uh, the, the Kirchners, uh, somewhat of a, uh, of a um, I don't know, a, a moral victory according to them, they, bas they basically got uh, Macri to accept 52% uh, winning by 52% instead of winning by 60%. Uh, I kept up with the uh, uh, counting of those votes until 2 a.m. and Mauricio Macri was basically winning by 8 or 9 points until they got almost like 80% of the votes. All of a sudden when they started going past 80% of, of the votes, about maybe 70%, all of a sudden, it was all Kirchner. All well, the, the Kirchner candidate was which was Daniel Scioli, basically a, a puppet of Cristina Kirchner. But all of a sudden, with the last twenty percent, it's the difference just started to disappear, which really makes no sense. It would it would basically take like all those votes to be one sided when um, the trend was very clear. So uh, I wouldn't be surprised at all if and there were. Um, you know, comments going around about violence erupting on the streets in some parts when people, when, when the Macri people were, were celebrating on the streets. Um, and all of a sudden, uh, Scioli, which is the, the Cristina Kirchner candidate, uh, came out and admitted defeat, even with 2-3% of the votes being counted, which, you know, you normally wouldn't do that, you know, unless you have more of a, uh, of a, um, of a percentage. So I wouldn't be surprised if there was some sort of agreement there uh, between the two. At the end of the day, uh, Cristina Kirchner is uh, still uh, leaving the country and Mauricio Macri is taking presence, uh, is assuming uh, as president. Who's Mauricio Macri? Mauricio Macri is, you know, putting it quickly in some ways, uh, a center-right conservative. You know, he's more of a center guy, especially for you guys in the United States have, a, have maybe a little bit of a different idea of what right and left means. He, he's de definitely not left-leaning, but uh, I would say that for in, in American terms, he's definitely a center guy. He's not very, a little bit leaning to a right conservative in his views, but he said it himself several times that he doesn't let his, uh, his own... Um, um, his own personal views in terms of of religion, you know, being a, a Catholic and being more of a of a conservative type of person, he does not let that uh, influence what he believes has to be done in terms of representing the the people that got him into office and what's best for the people. So um, many of the things that he clearly is not in favor of, he would assumingly uh, go for if he believes that's that's the best uh, thing to do. Uh, I, I like Macri. Macri, I really do. I mean, he did a great job. He's the son of a somewhat shady um, a businessman um, back back in the in the eighties and nineties, Franco Macri, which was by all accounts uh, somewhat of a, of a shady um, business guy, right? A, a businessman run, running in, in construction and such. You know, typical of Argentina, you wouldn't be getting a, a, a job in construction with the government unless you, you had some, some sort of, um, of incentive of some kind. So those kind of things were pretty typical. Now, Mauricio Macri, he's a pretty smart guy. He's also an engineer. He studied engineering in the same university. I studied civil engineering as well uh, for some time, at least in the Catholic University of Buenos Aires. And they don't give titles away over there. I mean, you actually have to uh, work pretty hard, study a lot, so as to get your master's degree in, in civil engineering, which is what he has. And uh, I, I saw that myself. It's, it's no joke. It's pretty tough. So. After his career in engineering, probably working with, with his father or something typical over there, um, he got a presidency of Boca Juniors Club. Boca Juniors is, is a football club in Argentina, but football is, is huge. In Argentina, uh, think of it as bigger than American football in the United States. It's, it's really that big. It's, a, it's, a, it's, it's huge how important a football or soccer for you guys 
es en Argentina. En Mauricio Macri ran the, the, the largest uh, football club in the country and did so successfully both in winning uh, t uh, titles, the, the world title and such, but most of all from, a, from an administrative point of view, the way he handled and he he cleaned up the club and organized it correctly, got the right people in charge. Then he became major of the city of Buenos Aires and also did a great job as major of the city of Buenos Aires as well. He was very clear in, in his objectives. He fixed the huge problem of the city always flooding and he said it from the, from the start. He said, I'm going to be needing four years until the city stops flooding. You know, no one, <laughs> we're used to not believing in politicians, but after four years, effectively so, the city stopped flooding while everywhere else around started flooding or, or continued to flood because no one in charge actually did the, the, the constructions needed to, to fix that. I mean, he did a great job in general with the city of Buenos Aires, with schools, with hospitals, pre people happy in the way he, he run things. He's a great uh, guy in terms of administering things correctly. Uh, he started the, a political party of his, of his own, so he didn't affiliate, as it's typically done in Argentina, with the Peronist movement, which is disgusting, and it represents some of the worst populism that we've had in Argentina, and very common in South America in general, this, this populist leader uh, thing that really always ends up in, in corruption and abuse of, of power. Uh, Mauricio Macri, when he started, he started as... Um, Mauricio Macri is is a product of the 2001 economic collapse, right? When he saw everything that went down, he decided to get into politics. And no one thought he'd get anywhere with that, but, and even Cristina Kirchner said herself, if you don't like the way I'm doing things, then create your own political party, run from president and win the elections. That's what she actually told Mauricio Macri. Mauricio Macri effectively did that. He created his own political party and became major and then won the elections. So, you know, sometimes you have to watch out your words, even if you are president of a country, because it may come back and bite you in the ass like it happened to Cristina. So, uh, yes, now the thing is this, Mauricio Macri is assuming as president, but we already know that there's a huge mess left behind. I mean, these last few days, uh, over a hundred laws had been passed just yesterday, in Argentina, you know, the last desperate attempts from the Kirchner government trying to pass things, trying to get people in places, you know, so as to assure, so as to assure them, uh, you know, a, a, an income in the future. There's this joke going around that now for the first time they will have to actually go out and work for a living, which is something that a lot of go those guys, in all honesty, they've never done before. They went from high school directly into politics and just got used to stealing just for carrying a flag or clapping when when uh, Cristina or other of her puppet politicians you know were making um, a statement of some kind so guys finally it's it's great news now the thing is this um, is Argentina gonna be changing all of a sudden absolutely not unfortunately so I'd wish that it was that way but um, I'd love to go back to Argentina. It's my country. I, of course, love my, my country. And there's no other place like, uh, like home. And it's uh, always been that way, always will, for pretty much everyone, including myself. Now, the thing is this. Argentina is still pretty much a huge mess. Argentina will not change this year or the following one. And I'd be very surprised if Mauricio Macri makes you know, changes that are reflected in everyday life in, in the society you know, as uh, on the streets, especially when it comes to crime. I think he's a, he seems to be an honest politician, which you know we, we don't see that very often in Argentina. Uh, but the problem in Argentina goes beyond that. And it's not the kind of thing that you, I mean, it took 12 years to get to this mess that we have now. It's going to be taking a good amount of time as well to get out of it. You do not fix it in a couple years, five years, maybe 10. I mean, I, I wish nothing more than to see a, a different country and be able to go back home uh, myself. But I know it's not going to be happening all of a sudden. And the, the crime problem, you just do not fix it from one year to the next. It's going to be taking quite a, bit, quite a bit of time. You know, best case scenario, thinking five, ten years minimum. If everything does go according to plan and uh, Macri is the guy he seems to be and nothing goes wrong in terms of him being killed, which is always a possibility over there. I mean, uh, Nisman, the... the um, 
the, the guy that was uh, accusing the, the, the Kirchner government and specifically uh, accusing Cristina Kirchner and was going to be going to trial against her. Just a day before that happened, happened he ended up dead in his house with a bullet in his, in his head. So that's the kind of thing that does happen in, over there. Uh, so if Magri does not get killed, if he actually manages to fix stuff, he's, if he's not something else that we haven't seen so far, um, then in, in a few years, maybe. But, you know, as of right now, you still have to be very aware of, of your surroundings at all times. Uh, in terms of crime, the very uh, violent crime problem over there, you will not fix that from one day to the, to the next. And that's, that's too bad. Folks, that's going to be all for now. If you're interested in knowing how to get by in a situation like the one that we saw in Argentina when the whole country went to hell in 2001 and everything that I, um, I try to uh, share and teach regarding that, check out my book, The Modern Survival Manual, Surviving the Economic Collapse. Link is going to be there below uh, with you know, very useful information, you know, even today, no matter where it is that you are, because lots of the things that happened in Argentina back then are pretty much happening everywhere where else around the world and yeah we're living in pretty interesting times you know very sad what's going on in terms of terrorism in terms of even more war in the horizon um, probably gonna be doing a video regarding that uh, next time especially in terms of um, of uh, immigration terrorism uh, here in Europe I think that many guys have a, a pretty different idea of what really is happening over here uh, so probably gonna be addressing that in uh, another video also letting you know how I'm getting here getting around here in Spain what I'm liking about what not so much and, and so folks remember to subscribe take care have a great day and as always see you on our next video